Okay, so three more trig identities here that we're going to show. 76, 77, and number 78. Again, hopefully these aren't uh, too terribly awful. Okay, 76. We've got secant x minus cosine x. We want to show that equals tangent x times sine x. Well, recall that secant of x, that's just 1 over cosine x. Minus cosine x. I'm going to put that over 1 just to... Because I'm going to get common denominators on the left side. And again, we're trying to show, hey, does that equal tangent x times sine x? Well, if we multiply, if we get common denominators, I would have to multiply top and bottom of my second term by cosine. So we would have cosine x on the denominator. Cosine times cosine would be cosine squared x. So we've got 1 minus cosine squared x over cosine x. Well, again, we have this identity that sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So if we subtract the cosine squared from both sides, we'll get that 1 minus cosine squared x equals sine squared x. So we've got sine squared x in the numerator. And I'm going to write that as sine x times sine x. And the reason for that is, well, if we break this up, we can write this as sine x over cosine. So I'm just taking that part, multiplied by sine x. Right? You could write that as sine x over 1, which would get us right back to the previous step. Well, sine over cosine, that is tangent. We still have our sine x hanging out, and that's all there is to it. Finished with that one. Um, 77, same idea. We've got 1 minus, or excuse me, 1 over 1 minus sine x. I'm going to leave myself a little room here. Plus 1 over 1 plus sine x. Well, and again, we're trying to show th that we get 2 times secant squared x. Well, in this case, what I'm going to do, I should have left myself with a little more room here, so let's drop this down. I'm going to get common denominators. So what I'm going to have to do is multiply top and bottom of my first fraction by 1 plus sine x. And I'm going to put that in parentheses just to remind myself to distribute. Plus, we've got 1 over 1 plus sine x. We'll multiply top and bottom of that one by uh, 1 minus sine x. Well, in the numerator, we'll have 1 plus sine x plus 1 minus sine x. Again, I usually like to put it in parentheses just to make it look a little cleaner. In the denominator, we've got a difference of perfect squares. We'll be left with 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, so in the numerator, we've got 1 plus 1, which is 2. The sine x's will cancel out, and using the same identity we did a second ago, if we start off instead of subtracting cosine squared from both sides, if we subtract sine squared from both sides, we'll have cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So we can replace the denominator with cosine squared x, and, well, 1 over cosine is secant, so 1 over cosine squared would be secant squared. Well, we don't have a 1, though. We've got a 2. So we're left with 2 times secant squared, and that gives us, again, the desired result. All righty, last but not least, number 78. We've got sine x divided by 1 minus cosine x. We want to show that equals cosecant x plus cotangent x. So what I'm actually going to do with this one is I'm going to start with the right-hand side. I'm trying to show that these are equal. To me, it's probably easier. Well, let's see. Let's think. Let me think about it, actually. Um, so let's even start it. What would be the best? Typically, I like to start with a side that has multiple terms because typically if I get common denominators and clean it up, um, everything should work out. So the other thing I'm thinking is, um, you know, maybe if I 
multiplied by a conjugate, things will simplify. Let's try that. So let's start with the left side and we'll see what happens. If not, we'll try it the other way. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this uh, fraction on the left by 1 plus cosine x. And the reason I'm doing that is I see that I'm going to get this 1 minus cosine squared, and I'm going to be able to use the identity, uh, I'm going to be able to replace that with sine squared, just like I did a second ago. Okay, so in the numerator we'll have sine x if we distribute plus sine x times cosine x. In the denominator we'll get 1 minus cosine squared x. All right, well, I'm going to leave the numerator again alone. So we just saw in the, uh, one of the previous examples that 1 minus cosine squared x, we can write that as sine squared x. Well, now we can break this up. We can write this as sine x over sine squared x plus sine x times cosine x all divided by sine squared x. Well, we've got a sine x in the numerator. We have a sine x times sine x in the denominator. So we'll be left with 1 over sine x for our first term. And again, we can cancel out a sine factor. So we'll be left with cosine x over sine x. Well, 1 over sine, that's cosecant of x. Cosine over sine, that's cotangent of x. And hey, that's what we wanted to get, cosecant plus cotangent. So again, uh, we're in business. So, you know, maybe this isn't the most natural thing to do. Maybe you would think, you know, how on earth do you know to multiply by the conjugate? Um, and again, the reason why I did that is, well, I recognize that then I'm going to have this difference, this 1 minus cosine squared. Hey, there's a trig identity for that. And at that point, I'm thinking, you know, at least that, that gives me something to do, and hopefully I'll be able to break it up and simplify it. So, again, not the hardest identities in the world, but definitely I think if you've forgotten any of these identities, it uh, should be a good refresher because you'll definitely see them and you'll definitely want to know them.